Most of the time when people talk about solar energy, what they mean is solar photovoltaics. In other words, the, the panels that you can put on your roof or that you see on top of buildings, uh, they generate electricity. The light shines on them, they generate electricity. But solar energy can be used in a number of other different ways as well. Um, another way of generating electricity is called concentrated solar thermal. And here you uh, concentrate the light with a mirror or a lens, and you make water get hot, typically. And that hot water can generate steam, and the steam can be used to generate electricity. So it shows up in many different ways, but mostly as photovoltaics. Within the energy industry, there's actually three big drivers for change. The first, and probably the most important, is energy security. And typically when people talk about energy security, what they mean is they want ample supplies, they want them reliably, and they want them affordably. But in addition to energy security, there's increasing concern about the climate. Uh, fossil fuels generate carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and uh, there are a lot of people, including myself, that think high concentrations of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is going to cause a problem with climate change. And then third is the idea of the green economy. Uh, there's a lot of people, and get, again, including myself, that believe there will be good economic opportunities in the future based on clean energy, clean renewable energy. Now, without going into any of them in too much detail, I would say the reason that it's important uh, that we start really being much more serious about renewable energy and solar energy is all three of these drivers have the potential to create downside risk if we don't do it, but a lot of upside opportunity in the form of economic activity, jobs, a more stable environment if we do. Solar is A, not the only one, and it's not the newest, and it's not the most advanced. Now, the reason I think we need to pay attention to it is because solar falls on literally every square foot of the latitudes below the Arctic Circle. Um, you're always getting sunlight. And as a consequence, it's available pretty nearly any place in the world. So it is the most abundant and it is the most uh, ubiquitous. All energy forms that are generated from the sun uh, have the same basic problem. And that is the sun, in spite of the way it feels in Arizona in the summertime, is actually quite a diffuse energy source. In other words, if you were to mark out a square meter on the ground and measure how much energy is passing through there, it's not a lot. What that means is that as you're converting that sunlight into other energy forms, you're working with a diffuse energy source. That translates into big facilities. You have to have big solar arrays or you have to have big algae bioreactors. Uh, you have to have big mirror systems in order to capture enough energy to make it meaningful. That means a lot of land. Land costs money. The hardware costs money. So all of this adds up to large capital costs. The energy input is more or less free. That's certainly the case. But the capital that you have to invest in order to capture it is anything but free. And so the challenge is how do you get the capital cost down?